When talking about acids and bases, we uh, often classify them into two different groups. There are strong acids and bases and weak acids and bases. And in this video, I'm going to discuss the difference between strong and weak acids and bases. We'll start with talking about acids. Uh, the similar idea applies to bases. So a strong acid is something like hydrochloric acid. A weak acid is something like acetic acid. So I have those examples here. So what is, let's just talk about in words what the definition of these are. We can quantify this, uh, but we won't cover that. <clears throat> At this point in our discussion of acids and bases, we'll get to that much later down the line. But you can quantify how strong or how weak an acid or base is. Uh, but for right now, we're going to do the qualitative picture where we get the basic concept. So hydrochloric acid, this, is one, this one is a strong acid. And what makes it strong? The acid completely dissociates in water. So what that means is that when we put HCl in water, when we put hydrochloric acid in water, um, it completely separates into H plus ions and Cl minus ions. And there, there's, no, there's not any in water, any HCl that still stays together. So that is what defines something as a strong acid. What, makes that, what about that makes that something a strong acid? Well, it means it's producing the maximum number of protons that it can from the, the given amount of acid that you put into water. So you are producing the maximum amount of protons. That means that it's going to be uh, very reactive in terms of chemical reactions that can occur with a, with a strong acid. In terms of this picture that we have over here on the right, um, our strong acid is represented by the picture on the bottom here where you can see that we have, we've left out all the water except for the water that's become hydronium ions, but where we have these, uh, these negative ions here, these represent the chloride ions, and these are the hydronium ions, and there's no HCl that's still left together. In contrast, a weak acid has incomplete dissociation. So a weak acid, uh, the acid only partially dissociates in water. That means most of our acid stays as in this form, CH3CO2, and only a little bit of it actually separates the proton off from the acetate ion. So H3, the H plus to form the hydronium ion, and, and only a little bit of the acetate forms. If we look at the top picture, let me use a different color. So our weak acid is up here. And we can see our yellow here, these yellow balls here, these represent the acetate ion, and the white here represents our protons. And we can see most of the molecules are still together. Most of them are, are not separated out. And so the proton has not actually been donated yet. Um, it's just stuck to that acetate. But we do have, in this, in this drawing, we do have one acetate ion that's dissociated along with one hydronium ion that's here. And so this is the main difference between a strong acid, like HCl, and a weak acid, like acetic acid. Is this whether it completely dissociates or not? Another way that this shows up in something that you can measure about these acids, uh, about a strong versus a weak acid, is a strong acid is a, oops, is a strong electrolyte, meaning that it will conduct electricity very well because you have formed lots of ions in the solution, whereas a weak acid is a weak electrolyte. It will, only, uh, it will conduct electricity. It's not that there's no dissociation, there's no ions at all, but it doesn't conduct electricity very well. So going back to our discussion of electrolytes versus non-electrolytes, uh, a weak acid is sort of in between. It conducts electricity a little bit, but it doesn't have this full dissociation. Now we can apply the same idea to bases. Uh, the difference with bases being instead of thinking about protons, we're now thinking about often other, uh, usually hydroxide. So an example of a strong base is a molecule like NaOH, sodium hydroxide, which again, we get complete dissociation into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. So this is an example of a strong base. Um, and for a weak base, we would have something like ammonia. Now, ammonia is a molecule that, at its first glance, doesn't even look like a base. There's no hydroxide ion present. But ammonia does accept protons. You can add a proton onto ammonia to form ammonium ions. And so this, this means that ammonia 
is a weak base. Now, in solution, only a little bit of the ammonia will do this reaction. So most of it will stay, so we get the same thing. We're gonna have most of the ammonia will stay as NH3, and a little bit will react with the with water molecules um, to form our NH4 plus ions. Right, where it's where it has accepted a proton, whether from water or from any other base that's present in the solution. So let's uh, to complete this discussion, we need to find, figure out what are the weak, uh, not what are the weak, but what are the strong acids and bases. Those are ones you should be familiar with. Um, whereas anything else that's not a strong acid base is a weak acid or base by definition. Uh, so in terms of strong acids, there's there's a pretty small list that you need to be aware of. So the ones that we need to know for strong acids are acids formed from the halogen ions. So hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, and hydroiodic acid. So there is one exception here. Hydrofluoric acid is not a strong acid, so it does not completely dissociate in water. So all the other ones from the halogens that are formed that form acids with with H, uh, with hydrogen ions, those are all strong acids. And we can add. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting any here. There's a couple extra ones that we can add to this. Uh, nitric acid, HNO3, is also a strong acid that will completely dissociate. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4, is a strong acid. And H2SO4 is a little bit uh, special in that it actually has two protons that can lose, and the first proton is it's a strong acid. But when it, so just to be clear here, it becomes HSO4 minus, and donates that proton. That's a strong acid because that completely dissociates. And then HSO4 minus hydrogen sulfate is a weak acid. So it only partially dissociates after that point. And then the last one to be to have on your list is perchloric acid, HClO4. So that's our list of strong acids. These are the six that you should be familiar with. Um, half of them are pr pretty easy. Just remember it's the H with the halogen ions, the ones in the second to last column of the periodic table. And then the rest are just ones that you should memorize. These are on your uh, on your on your PDF of uh, nomenclature of things to, to ions to memorize. These strong acids are at the bottom, so now that's actually relevant. Um, so nitric, sulfuric, and perchloric acid are the other ones uh, that you need to be aware of. And perchloric doesn't even show up all that often, but it is a strong acid. In terms of strong bases. These are, instead of a specific list to memorize, what you just need to remember is that strong bases are uh, combinations of group one and two metals with hydroxide. So any ionic compound like sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide or, let me check the rest of my list, calcium hydroxide. Oops. Spell it right. Um, these anything that forms uh, a, a hydroxide from the group one or two metals, these are strong bases because these uh, dissolve completely in water, form hydroxide ions, which are which are strong bases. So that is our discussion of strong acids and weak acids, strong bases and weak bases.